This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. But we're on, and today's guest, we've got footballer David Goodwill. How are you? I'm good, James. Thanks for having me, man. First and foremost, thanks for coming on the show. It's a very sensitive subject. I've got to be honest, no many people would touch these things. I wouldn't have went near it if it was in a court of law and you were found guilty, but it was a civil case, you were found guilty, court of law, there was no evidence, but it couldn't go to court. Is that correct? That's correct. I think there was insufficient evidence. Uh, I think what the kind of reason we got the, the threshold wasn't met to go to criminal court, you know. Uh, and that's just one of those things it's not to me you know it's, it's up to the crown and I know uh, the accuser just feels badly rightly so about that you know but like I'm the same as her like you know I don't, I don't feel like I've had justice you know I feel like I feel like we've both been kind of put in a almost like in limbo because we're never going to get the justice that we both seek you know like I say this is a very sensitive subject I'm not a judge, I'm not a jury, I'm just an interviewer. I feel as if everybody deserves a chance to tell their story to a degree. Like I said, if you were charged in a criminal court, I wouldn't have had you yeah. because it's... No, it's I get that. Do you know, know what I mean? But before we get into everything, I always go back to the start of my guests. Get a bit of understanding about you, where you grew up, how it all began. Yeah, well, I was a young boy uh, from Stirling. Um, kinda, uh, I don't know if you know a place called The Ratlock. That's no. where I was brought up... Uh, just my family, you know, like normal upbringing, like mum and dad, and still together to this day. Uh, this is probably part of one of the reasons I'm here as well. You kind of like get that my mum's always on to me saying you need to speak up, you know, like it's been 12 years, you've had all this thrown at you, and, and like, I think she's given me a right old job that I needed to like because you almost bury your head in the sand with something like this because like, how do you fight something like that, you know? People think I'm I'm this monster, I'm this beast, a rapist, you know? It's something you, you're, you're afraid to fight, but you want to fight, but you don't feel that like you've got the courage or strength to do it. But I think I've been pushed around too much now and I've just kind of got to the point in life now, I've got a family, you know? Like I've, I've, I've probably shied away from it for too long, protecting them, thinking I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and, and I'll take care of my family. But now I'm not even allowed to take care of my family, you know? What were you like at school? Uh, I was a good lad. If you speak to my school teachers, maybe they'll say different. But like, I think I was just more interested football, football, football daft. You know, all my teachers used to say to me, look, you might not make it. It's like one in a billion make it in football and things like that. Uh, and I wish I listened now. You know, I wish I, I, wish I had good ed education and I could walk into a decent job, you know, but I need to start for the bottom, work my way up. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new challenge. And you started with the United youth team yeah as a kid uh, I think I was maybe I was quite a late bloomer with Dundee United you know like I played youth, uh, boys club football up until I was about probably about 14 you know and that's quite late normally you're in pro, pro youth 12, 13 about 12 and that you know I was training I trained with Rangers Hearts Rangers I felt uncomfortable you know the Glasgow boys and I had a, a strange second name so they had a field day with that <laughs> uh, and when you're that young you feel like you're getting picked on and I felt like that uh, went to Hearts and at that time Hearts were only sending man mountains like if you weren't a 6 foot 2 12 year old they wouldn't want you so I was quite a small kid 
And then the opportunity came for Dundee United and I kind of got a trial game and uh, I must have been about 14, I done well in a trial game and then the, the head scout was saying, look, we want you, can we sign you? And I said to my dad at the time, what do you think? And he, he just said, go for it, you know, what else you got to lose? And and I never looked back, that was me. What age did you make your debut? I was 16. I uh, probably thrown into it a bit too soon, but um, I was training with the first team in that at 16, so... I think it was Gordon Chisholm at the time. Uh, he was a manager. And yeah, I remember he actually said to me on a Thursday, like, do you think you'd be all right playing in, in front of 60,000 at Ibrox? And I was like, cheeky wee guy. I went, ah, no, no bother, you know, easy. I didn't know he was actually being serious, you know. So I was saying to the boys, ah, I'm playing on Saturday and that. He actually threw me on as a sub for the last 20 minutes. I think we got hammered though. <laughs> How was that experience? Oh, it was amazing, you know, like, because I had friends still at school. Like my, my best pals were still doing like fifth year at school and things like that. And uh, I would come back at the weekend to see them and things like, and they were at school all week and I was at Ibrox playing against like the mighty Rangers, you know, that was it. And I was thinking, this is mad, you know. So after, cause you were Scotland's next best thing, apparently she was scoring <laughs> goals all the time. You made a, you got a Scotland cap as well, but see many goals did you score your first season? As a young kid? Yeah. Uh, at Dundee United oh I don't know like you know maybe I couldn't even I couldn't even remember but remember back then you would be scoring maybe three and four a game in that eh so as a kid in a season you'd be looking at 50-60 goals a season eh so see when you made your debut how many games did you have that season was that the end of the season eh uh, that was nearer the end of the no I don't actually think it was because I actually played another game eh uh, for Dun I did play a few games that year I couldn't tell you how many but eh uh, I ended up being lucky enough to actually hit a game against Hibs. I always remember it and I scored a goal and things like that. I was 16 and then I became the youngest ever goal scorer in SPL. So that was a good one to have. And then uh, it, it stayed like that for a, a good few years until I think the boy Fraser Five he beat it. He was at Aberdeen. So what you were thinking then, young boy, coming from a shit area, youngest player to score, Scottish football, life going good there or did you still feel pressure uh, on yourself? I don't think you feel any pressure at that age. Eh? You just think... You know, you're you're playing in front of fifty thousand fans at, at Ibrox, and you're on ninety quid a week. You know, you're probably thinking, I "Hope I've got enough money to pay for the train on the way up on Sunday night." You know, like one of the ones you don't feel pressure. Once you've got, if you've got less, you feel nothing. You know, because it's just you just think it can only get better. So I didn't feel a lot of pressure as a young boy until probably I was turning about eighteen. You know, and then that's when you need to develop and get better, get out of your bad habits. New managers come in, they don't think like things about you, and then that's when you kind of screw them up. Because you were never short of controversial as well. You know, get done for like, assaults yeah. and shit in the papers. Listen, <laughs> boys are boys, there's always going to be Young trouble, boys. but people will always jump on. They do, they jump they on it and think they're aggressive and things yeah. like that. And I'm not even like that, you know. Like when I was 18, I think I had assault. I think I was 19, I had another assault. And then when I was 20, 20 or 21, there was another assault. Uh, I mean, they've all been well publicised, you know. And it's like, I can sit here and say I'm the victim, but I had a choice, you know, in these these cases, like these scenarios and things when you're on night suit, you know, you get if you play football, people will know who you are, they'll pick on you and then sometimes they'll pick on you too much and sometimes they'll get physical with you if you react. I mean, if you come off better than them, you're always going to be this, the bad man there, you know. Did Nabed ever tell you, grab you by the fucking ears and say, listen, get your shit together ah, as a young boy? Did. and Because seeing that kind of mentality out drinking uh, and causing trouble it's no good for the reputation it's no good for the club did they ever try and pull you aside to oh, aye, there, was, back there, was, there was quite a lot you know there was boys there yeah like when i was a young boy growing up i had like Derek mckinnis was the the captain of the club at his time uh yeah then as it progressed you had like lee wilkie remember big lee wilkie yeah, he was big captain defender. everybody Indeed. respect i everybody respected him he was a great guy i cleaned his boots and, uh, and he used to sort me out at Christmas, my Christmas bonus. Uh, I got on really well with him. And, you know, I think it was maybe my first or second assault. Uh, I went in and I said to, to said to him, there's a rugby player, he's uh, he stuck a heat into me last night and I've I've reacted and I've punched him back, but he's fallen and he's he's been knocked out. Do you think I should say to Craig Levine? Craig Levine at the time, Craig Levine's the scariest manager you ever meet in your life. He had hands like shovels. So he started laughing at me thinking, I ah, no bother we man, eh? Uh, he, he was like, no, no bother hard man. Away you go. I wouldn't say nothing. So that day I thought, oh, he told me not to say nothing. Eh? I'm all right. I'll just go home. Went home and the police snapped were at the door that day and, and it all went, went tits up, you know, and uh, 
it was in the paper and that, and I wish I'd said to Levine, because uh, he might have to been a bit more lighter with me, you know. But uh, he did punish me after that, aye. What sort I, of punishment? I don't know if I can go on it. Because he's, uh, he's actually spoke about it. Uh, like, he spoke about it, I'm sure, on the radio or something, but he never named names. Well, that was the name that he named, but he never named. Uh, he looked me in a room for five days with no windows and looked the door and says, that's what it's going to be like in prison, me, man. And he was right, you know, he was right. I should have listened, but it's easier. They say that now when you're 34, you know, when you're a, a husband, a father, you know. What age did you go to Blackburn? I was 22. So, through the, how many years did you play with United? Because you get loaned out as well. Was that I, at Aberdeen and you're with a few teams. I was loaned out at Dundee United as a 17 year old kid, you know, to go and bulk up and things like that. Uh, I went to Rafe Rovers, believe it or not. I, I went to Rafe Rovers. John McGlynn was the manager. So, when it all kicked off with Rafe, you know, I'd known, I'd known John since I was a, a young boy, you know. So, he was like a father figure to me and he said he'd look after me and that, you know. So, I trusted John, and uh, but I, I loved my time at Rafe the first time I was there. you seen real men fighting, you know, for a win bonus, but it meant something. Because we'd been playing youth team our days and thinking, it doesn't mean a lot, you know, you think it does, but it doesn't mean as much that these boys are playing part-time football, got jobs, they're working, leaving their work, going straight to training, and that that, that was real men, eh, you know. Marvin Andrews and that were in the team, big know, boys, big, Marv, uh, big well. Marv. He's still solid, I think oh, he can still play. Man. I used to say, Marv, how can you kick the ball? Uh, how can you heed the ball further than you can kick the ball? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't know, man. He's just solid, isn't he? Because I play charity football uh, matches with him still, and he's ruthless. You've got uh, these guys who've uh, never uh, played uh, football who paid money to play in the match, and he's going through them uh, as if it's an old firm. I used to avoid him in training, you know, like in small sided games and that I would be right, where's he going to play I'll go to the other side like, you know because he, he is solid he come right through you did you know how good you would have been at that age did you have the confidence nah I think you know I probably wasn't even that good a player back then you know I was more of a poacher and you would score goals and you still had you still still the headlights because you scored the goals but see if you looked at your over round, all, overall play back then you know still had a lot to learn so how many goals did you score for Dundee United your last season there? When, before I left? Yeah. Uh, I think it may have been 20 or something, 20 odd, but... Which is good for the Scottish uh, Premier, Scot especially for when Dundee we were United. Kind of struggling in that. You know, I had a good season when we we won the Scottish Cup and that, and I think that's where the kind of wee bit of publicity and teams started sniffing, you know. What was it like winning the Scottish Cup? Ah, oh, it was great, aye. But even then, like a day like that, you take it for granted. You're a young boy, I think I was 20, 21. Like you just think that's what's going to happen all the time. It's not until you get older you realise, I wish I, I wish I cherished that more, you know. Because a lot of big names then come in for you. Were you no close to signing with Rangers? Or was that paper talk? Well, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about that, eh? But like I, like before this incident happened, you know, I was going there in January. I was going and then all got, the plug got pulled because of this. I had a, had a rape charge on my head. Nobody was going to sign me then, you know. So that, that was a dream for mine, gone. All because of that night, you know. So see when you... United, when did you sign Blackburn then? Was that after the charge? Yeah, the charges got dropped in July mm -hmm. and then it was like maybe two weeks later I was away. So this is what happened when you were still playing with United? Yeah, this is all going on. You're obviously trying to focus. You're thinking, look, if I can screw the nut and try and focus on football and just like forget about what's happening in the outside world and, you know, things will be better one day. That was it, aye. So you're with United, back controversy. When did you make your Scotland debut? Uh, I think I was at Dun United. We had a friendly up my brain against some team, and I remember it was like a friendly. Most of the big boys will pull it, you know. But see, you're you're on the fringes. You want your you want you want a call up, you know. So I remember thinking like, oh, like big players are pulling it. Like maybe you'll get pulled in, and I did. I got pulled in. I think we played a friendly up in Pataudry in Aberdeen. I got on as a sub for a bit. Fair Islands. That's right, Fair Islands. About half an hour I played. Done all right, and I thought oh, that's a decent now. And that, that you get a wee taste for it, you know, and that makes you want more. And you scored against Spain. I got a penalty against Spain. I my my pals will never forget. Like never let me forget. It was only a penalty, you know. That's what they say. I was like, I know, but would you score that penalty against Spain? They go probably. I probably would have. I. But where, where was that hand in? It, no, that was over in Spain. I think it was in Alicante or something. What age were you? I would have been young again, so I'd have been 22, 23 maybe. So you're no, whole, no older you're, than 23. Your whole career kind of still ahead of you. You're ah, kind of breaking yeah. through, Scotland debut, scoring against Spain. 
So what is did it all happen then? The night look probably everybody's what I watched for this night. Watch aye, this, aye, night. Aye. this is a night that I've, we've got to be careful because there's victims. Aye, this lass is a victim. You're saying you could potentially aye. be a victim. So it's just to be your side of it. And I've had hundreds of messages. Yeah. I'm talking hundreds of messages for people, football players yeah. and a lot of people to get you on to tell your story. And I'm not mentioning their names because listen, they're going to get backlash yeah. because we know how sensitive it is. But talk us through it before that night started, what happened? Where were we that day? Mm -hmm. Well, that day we were playing up in Aberdeen um, and it was just a normal winter's New Year's. I mean, we, we don't celebrate New Year really because we were always playing through the kind of festive period. I think it was like the 1st of January we played Aberdeen and uh, we were getting beat 1-0 or something or maybe 2-1. I've scored in the last minute and uh, we drew two each or, or one each. I can't even remember the score, eh? And then... Um, on the bus, like, you know, boys are like, oh, what are you doing tonight? Things like that. I wasn't actually planning going there, you know, like, there was no plans going there. Me and David Robertson were good friends. We lived in a house together in Diggs. And uh, he was like, well, if you, you're you not doing anything, come through and see me. I'm going out with a few of my mates. And I was like, ah, I'll, I'll let you know on that, you know. And I didn't think I'll go because I had planned to meet my big cousin, Gareth, his name was. And uh, so I just went along with my own plan, like, I was going to meet him. And we went to a bar in Stirling that night. And uh, it was kind of New Year and there was nobody there. It was dead, eh? My phone goes and Rob was like, what are you up to? You know, and I was like, oh, no, much. We just came to the first bar. He says, you, you been drinking yet? I was like, no, I was just a bit of a drink. He says, jump in the car, come through and see us. It's, it's better here. And that was it, man. I went. If I never went, you know, who who knows what could have happened. So in the nightclub, what happened? How did you meet? How did you start talking? How did it all start? Well, we went to the first bar, uh, and I actually met Denise before I even got to the first bar, you know. I was driving up the kind of high street in Bathgate and uh, she says doesn't remember this either. But this is before we even got to the first bar. I, I pull over to two kind of women walking up the hill. I didn't know where the bar was. And I just says, do you know where this bar is? They tell me where they're gone. They say, we're going there as well. We'll see you there. I thought nothing of it. Drove up, turned left, parked up, and we went into the bar. You know, I never really had much conversation or even in that bar, you know. Robbo was there more than me. He knew her from school. How did you end up back to the house and whose house was it? It was Robbo's mate's flat and um, I think the plan was to go back with, I think it was a girl called Rachel and Denise. We were going to go back there, you know, like for a party, you know, but it was one of those things, you're, you're on a night out and you've been kissing and things like that, so... You're kind of thinking it might lead to something, it might know, you know, uh, and it obviously led to more than what, what you thought it was going to be. How much do you remember of that night? See, everybody will think that, oh, you must remember everything, but you were drunk, you were intoxicated yourself, you know, but I remember I've written, like, quite clearly that there was no kind of, like, nobody was, like, sleeping or that, that's what everybody thinks out there, you know, that wasn't the case. We were all talking all laughing joking just like normal drunken people would be doing you know was she spiked or anything was she saying see I've no? read these stories as well about her being spiked you know I'd never touched a drug in my life so I don't know where she's getting that from I, I would I would never even think about doing that you know I, I don't even know why we would even need to do that you know she was buying the drinks herself and that you know was there any any reports that anything come back well, the system was clear? I've read some of the medical records and it says there was free traces of uh, drugs in our blood. And then I've read other medical records that says there was no traces of blood, eh, drugs in the blood. So I couldn't quite put my finger on that, you know. Because she says she woke up, nobody was nah. there, she couldn't find her clothes. What time did you leave? I must have left about <sighs> half past three in the morning, three in the morning. I couldn't tell you an exact date. But I wanted to leave together. I really did. I wanted to leave together. We'd get a taxi, I'd drop her off, but she didn't want to leave. And when did you find out the, the rape shout was getting mentioned? It, it was the next day. Uh, David Robertson's pal obviously went back to his flat and there was police everywhere, you know, and then it was obviously quite clear he went and said, what's going on here? I think there was a young lassie assaulted last night and he knew obviously who was there that night, which mean David, uh, me and David Robertson. So what happens after that? We don't do anything. We didn't know what to do. Uh, Robo phones me and we're like, should we get a lawyer or things like that, you know, because we're obviously panicking for our lives, you know, we're thinking, what the, like, what the actual fuck going on, you know, because we just think, this this isn't, see, this isn't real, surely, no, and uh, so we didn't have to do anything, they, they contacted us, you know, the police for questioning. 
And what happens there then? Were you with a lawyer or did you go yourself? Uh, with a lawyer, you get questioned what had happened and things like that. You just talk them through it and, and they say, right, we've gathered everything and we'll go and do a, a thorough investigation and we'll get back to you. And what happens then? Well, they take your DNA and things like that. So my DNA was found uh, with Denise and on the scene. Oh, you had semen inside of her? Yeah. Robo di- Robos and didn't? There was no se- uh, there was no DNA for Robo. But know? he admitted being there as well? Yeah, so that was later on. So once they get the DNA for me, I can get charged with rape, which happened. So I was in charge to it. Uh, and Rob was obviously rightly so confused, thinking what's going on, you know. And a lot of people will say, uh, like, why did Robbo say that, you know? Like, why did Robbo, like, Robbo, he didn't need to say anything. He, that was him, he was away. Like, he could just go right off into the sunset. Nobody even knew he was there, you know. But he just came out and he says, no, nah, I can't do that, you know. We need to go and tell the truth. And that's what he done. So he went to the police himself off his own back, told them the truth, the story. And then uh, I think he had to go to like a court or something to do it. And, and they took all these evidence and what he had said, his testimony. And then they came to that decision. So she thought it was just you and her back at the house? Well, that's what she says, aye. So he, Robert, the other boy wasn't even, he, like you say, he didn't even need to be there? Yeah, he didn't even need to be there. Like, you know, he was, uh, there was no evidence in being there. So if... I, I, I don't know if his lawyer says, look, you don't have to do this, you know. But the type of man Rob was, he wouldn't have done that anyway. What about medical reports? Was there any forced entry, any bruising, any scratches? No bruising, no scratches. There's, there was no physical violence. That's what a lot of people don't understand, you know. It was nearly like a... Like, we never stalked Denise and thought, look, she's getting dragged down to a bush and doing what you want, you know, because I know that there's all types of rapes. I know that, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of physical abuse out there that... It doesn't need to be violent, you know. But this case wasn't violent. This was three people drunk, having consensual sex, and, and what was happening in front of me was, like, normal. Like, she was talking, laughing, joking, joining in, you know. So for her to say she can't even remember that, it's it's hard for me to live with because I'm thinking, if I could only show you the way you were acting, we had no idea that you were going to wake up in the morning and not remember this, you know. How long did it take after your statement for you to get charged? Uh, it would have been a, probably about a month I think yeah they get the DNA test back and all that and then as soon as they've got that they've got enough evidence on you when did you how did you feel as soon as you found out you were getting charged with rape oh gutted you know like actually I remember obviously because I'd been hiding this inside and they told my mum and dad or nothing you know and I, and I got the phone call saying it's, it's coming on the news and so I've drove home to my mum and dad's right before the six o'clock news and it was it was the headline, you know, and I had to try and tell them before it comes out, and uh, obviously I'm in tears and things like that. I'm telling them like this is this isn't true, like and they're just saying look, you just need to fight it, son. What were you? We did Dundee United, sir. They took us in in the morning, chatted away, and like they kind of came to the point like obviously this is a really serious issue. Like you could lose your jobs and all that. Uh, they decided to to back us until. The, out, the outcome had come yet, you know. So how long did it take before the charge got dropped? Uh, that went on from probably January till July, so it was a good six and months. How were you when you were charged? Were you hiding or were you oh. st- still out in the streets just not giving a fuck? How, how, oh, how that's what people think, aye, but no, no. I was probably in a dark room for a long time after that, you know. Even like my football obviously took a hit as well. Like People won't even remember, but I couldn't kick my own arse, you know, for for a couple of months after that, I owe a lot to Peter Houston because he just stuck by me. He says, you'll get through this. You know, you'll get through it. Like, what you're feeling right now is is not forever. So his confidence in me gave confidence in myself to, like, start playing well again, you know. Are you still playing for the first team? I was still on the first team in that, eye. What was the fans saying? Oh, like the, my own fans. My yeah, own all fans. fans. All fans you were playing all, against? Oh, the fans I was playing against, you know, they had a field day, you know, like, we know she said no, like, singing at the foul game, you know, like, even going to, like, Parkhead and things like that, that's all you can hear. And you try and kid on you, it's no bothering you, but it's hurting you, it's eating you up inside, you know. It, it still happened to me this day, though, like, like nobody sees that either, so even when I was at Clyde, you know, I got to a away ground, it's all about me, it's not like, that's it, and half the players I play with, even the team I'm playing against, saying, I don't know how you can take that, you know, but I don't have a choice. Listen, it's the worst label you can be mm-hmm. labelled with as a fucking sex Aye. case. Let's it's be honest. A sex offender, you know, yeah. like a rapist. Like, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be known as that. 
You know, that's why I want to, keep, I want to fight and clear my name just as much as she wants to fight and get justice, you know, because I want justice as well. How long does it take for the charge to get dropped? Uh, charges got dropped in July, so it's pretty instant. You know, you get a phone call from a lawyer and, and you're thinking, but obviously as a young boy, you're like, I don't know if that's, was that really the lawyer? You know, it's like a, so much weight taken off you, it feels. But then on the other side, you need to think about Denise. Like Denise will be thinking she's been let down, you know. But to me, I felt like the truth has come out. It's, there's two sides to the coin, you know. So insufficient evidence. The 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 threshold for the evidence did they meet for court, like uh, crim, uh, crim, criminal court. And what's going through your mind when the charge gets dropped? Back mm -hmm. on your life, you can move Aye, on. that's it. Like so, you're thinking, right? I need to try and get back on my life. Learn from that. Le like learn from that. You know, like never put yourself in a situation like that again. You know, and uh, and I've learned from it. You know, like people will think. You, you've never learnt your lesson because you've never been to jail and that, you know, things like that, but that's not how it works, you know, I don't, I, I, you can't just go to jail because people want you to go to jail and, like, show remorse or rehabilitation, you know, that was one of Nicola Sturgeon's big ones, you know, like, rehabilitation, he's never, he's never had to do that, but in a civil matter, you don't get that, you know, you don't get rehabilitation, it's like, you get sued, right, you owe this person money, you know, that that's, it's just money in the courts, so if we were going to get real justice, we go we go to criminal court. How was the press? Press had a field day with me. They always have, you know, like their headlines, shamed footballer, rapist, you know. They don't care. And and the press are the first person to come out and say, someone should have been there for that boy, you know, like, oh, they should have spoke to someone and that. Once you're found hanging for a tree, you know, they, they don't care. So the charge gets dropped. How long did it take to sign for Blackburn? Was it two million, three million signing on? Uh, I, think they, I think they signed for about 2.8 million or something it was but I think it was like 2 million up front and that with add-ons and I mean the time I had at Blackburn they probably wouldn't have the add-ons let's be honest uh, I, it was fairly quite quick you know but when I went down to Blackburn I, I didn't actually want to go to Blackburn you know like no disrespect to them you know I was always wanting to go to Rangers at the time you know and I, people will think I'm a big Rangers fan and that I'm actually not even a big supporter of football you know I just like playing the sport I mean, I always say to my wife and that, like, if I was to pick a team, I'd pick Still and Albion. You know, that'd be my team because I'm from there. And when I'm younger, I'd take my son to Still and Albion games, you know, if he wants. I can't take my daughter. She's not interested, eh? She says, I don't want to play football. But that's it. Did you have options? I did. I, uh, I mean, I had contact with Rangers at the time when I was going down to Blackburn, you know, and that's a funny story because we get down to Blackburn to do the medical and, uh Blackburn postponed the medical till a day later. I freak out and say I don't want to be here. And my lawyers had to take me back up to Glasgow because I'm saying I'm I'm going to go to Rangers. You can't change my mind. And then it turns out there was a big argument with Rangers and the chairman at Dundee United at the time. He was saying I'm not selling you to Rangers. So if you don't go Blackburn, you're not going anywhere. Simple as that, you know. So it was one of the ones. And I felt like in my life, in my career. There's always been people saying, like, or trying to, like, kind of control you, you know, like, like, try and get what they want to happen, you know. So I ended up going to Blackburn and I regret it to this day, you know. So how did they know when you see a Celtic fan or something? No, I think... Money? Stephen Thompson, they, they, I think they'd had a big argument with Rangers, I don't know, through the years. They didn't like each other, I don't know. Like, you know, it, it's that's... I'm too small a fish to know what's going on behind closed doors with these chairmen and that, you know, but he just didn't like Rangers and didn't want me to go there, you know, it was in the same league and things like that. Didn't like to see, like, the big two teams taking their good players and things like that. Uh, but at the time I was saying I want to go there, he was just saying, no chance, you'll be staying here then, you know, and I'd just signed a new contract with them, so I was maybe, I think I signed a two or three year deal, so I was thinking... If I don't go now, you know, this chance might never come again. How much were you on at United? Uh, I think it would have been a couple of grand a week, you know. Good what? money, good money, aye, but for a young 22-year-old. What I about when you sign for Blackburn? Do you get signing on fees? Or is oh, it... I don't <laughs> want to talk about that, you know. Mm. Like, it was good money. It was life-changing for me, you know. Uh, we were in the Premier League for like, one year, you know, and it was good money then. Even when you get relegated, you know, you get your wages slashed and things like that. Everybody's got different kind of... Uh, percentage drops in their contract that'll be all different you know there was big dogs there like you had like Pedersen you know uh, Paul Robinson the goalie and that they'd all been good deals you know David Dunn 
How many games did you play? Uh, first year in the Premiership, I think I probably got any double figures, you know. A lot of them would have been... Um, subs? Subs, aye, like appearances, you know. Uh, but see, like, you know, the sub appearances and that down there, like, it's, it's, it's mental, the money that they've got down there, because, like, as you come on as a sub, you get two and a half grand. So all the boys used to say to me on the, on the bench, like, go get warmed up 10 minutes to go, you get yourself two and a half grand. I'd be out there, like, running a bit, like, I whip it up and doing, hi, I'll do that, aye. And then you'd get on for the last 10 minutes, I'm telling you. It was good. How, what sort of, who were you playing against down there? Was there anybody that stood out and you done, he's a player? Ah, Man City were coming coming alive at that point, you know. Like, they had, like, David Silva and all that. They'd signed Nasri. You had Balotelli there. You had Aguero. Like, you had some players there, you know. Rooney and that must have still been playing I, Gerard. Rooney and that Gerard was playing. Uh, who else was there? The big dogs. I mean, I just always remember playing. I actually started a game against Man City at Ewood Park and I got played as a right winger. <laughs> I've never played there in my life. <laughs> yeah, the big centre mid at that time, but. Big oh, black big guy, guy. Turi. Ah, he was frightening. He was unbelievable well, at that Never time. lost the ball, you know, and you couldn't get the ball off him. He was mm -hmm. that big and strong. So, Blackburn, how long did you last there? I was there for three years, but there was loan spells and that, uh, like, can I go out and loan, you know, I wasn't, well, as soon as I went to Blackburn, I was homesick, hated it, you know, I hated it, I was, I was in a flat on my own, like, pff, you think you, you finish training at like one o'clock, I mean, you got no hobbies, so you know, you're thinking, you got nobody, you know, so I got my mates not doing a few times, like, to kind of live with me and try and let me settle, but it never really worked, you know. How much did that affect your playing career? being charged before that anyway did, it, did oh, you see mentally, it like, mentally scarred for the rest of your life you know like, I'll never forget this like see when I'm driving for more than half an hour all day is replay it you know and think what what could I have done differently or what 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 it, like is she lying is she telling the truth are we all telling the truth I don't know you know it's like I've got so many questions myself you know so you get loaned out Blackburn again how many teams were you playing with then and out of football were you drinking much probably it was but I, I wouldn't have drink before training or anything like that you know I wasn't even like if I got training anymore I've been sitting in the house and drink you know I wasn't one of those guys but probably binging like you know like at the weekends and that you get a day off the next day maybe overdo it you know like just no concentrating on what you should be the most important thing you know like being an athlete and looking after yourself like I wish I had took took on I wish I was more professional and that's me 34 and I'm probably the most professional I've ever been now and that's, I had Paul uh, Merson on and he was snorting gear before the European games. <laughs> see, I was not like that, you know. And it's sad, but to see, no, no. you went through all that, you went through it all, so I can understand the, the darkness, the dark yeah. clouds and still living with it. Listen, the charges get dropped, Yeah, but you're still living with it. You're I'm still just living, living with, with the same, yeah, as what, same thoughts. what would have happened if I was mm -hmm. charged, you know, so what's the point in, what's the point in having the crown if the civil can just do the exact same thing to you? So what is the difference between court of law and a civil court court of law is government civil aye. court's private is that correct uh, I think, well it's not private because you can get legal aid and all that still through mm -hmm. it so but it's it's more like it's easier to get something to civil court than it is to get the crown because the the evidence doesn't need to be as strong it's probabilities you know like oh she's probably too drunk you know but we're playing with probabilities and that's playing with lives you know like because oh, she probably was too drunk or or, or she probably wasn't too drunk. Like, how, how can you just probably choose what path somebody's going to go after this, you know? I don't think it was right, but... Do you agree your career kind of stalled then? Oh, I like it. Well, after the civil case, I went, I, I chucked it at Plymouth. You know, I never got sacked. There'll be people saying that you got sacked. I never got sacked. I spoke to Derek Adams as soon as I got told what, what way it went, you know? Um, and I just said, I can't be here. I need to take my wife. I need to, I need to go away and... Like we went up to the Lake District that, that day, you know, just took our bag and says, look, look this is going to go mental, so let's go a drive. We drove up to the Lake District and we basically looking at nature and that, you know, and at that place, trying to get your mind off it with the dog. Well, how did you know this? How does this civil case work? So you're through it, oh, you're kind of getting on with your career, it's kind of stalling, but how long did it take for the civil case to come back around? Did you know this was happening? Aye, so after all, everybody's been heard, it, it takes a good two or three months, I think, it was like, kind of, maybe it finished in November or something, we didn't hear back till, what would we say, January, uh, 
That's when I got a phone call in the morning before it gets released for my lawyer. How long did it take? Bef- how did it, how did it even start? How does a civil case even start for something like this? Because if the criminal charges, everything's dropped. There's not enough evidence. How does the civil case work? And why did it take so long? Well, I think there's a there is a time limit of of like kind of civil cases. See if you go past the time limit, and there's nothing you can do. But I think what Denise done, which was was clever on her side, that she used the media. You know, she was speaking about it. Like she was saying she was being ignored and things like that. Uh, she also got a pay, payment from like some sort of abuse to women charity or something. I, I couldn't quite tell you what the name of it was. They obviously believe in her, and uh, that's not to do with me. Uh, but she was using the media to show that she was being ignored, so the legal aid board would then have to listen, and then we had to make her like a. An example, you know, and then we, that's how she, once she gets legal aid, that means we go to court. But I didn't get legal aid, you know. Rob will go to legal aid, Denise got legal aid. I had to pay all the way through it. Who were you playing for then? I was, uh, when I when I heard she got legal aid. I, when the civil case was coming round? Uh, when it was coming round, I was at Plymouth. But when I found out she was getting legal aid, it was, I was at Dundee United on loan back from Blackburn. So uh, as soon as she gets legal aid, that means the that case means can go. What that happens means, if she doesn't get legal aid? There would have been no case. Like she would have had to pay for a lawyer privately, you know. Uh, but as soon as she gets legal aid, well, that means I need to get a lawyer and things like that. Then that that then it's like three or four years, you know, before your case or maybe two years before the case gets heard. It did go on for ages, you know. And so you know the civil case is coming around. It might take two years, nah, three yeah. years, four years. How was your football career then? Oh, didn't how after that, you know. Like, that was it. You're... You don't, you're not concentrating on football then, eh? Like you're constantly paranoid, you know, like thinking what's going on, like what, what's happening now, on the phone to your lawyer, changing lawyers, you, you didn't know who to trust, you know, you're thinking, is this lawyer with me or is he, is he just using me, you know? And it's one of the things, you're, you're only, I'm still young at this point, you know, I'm still 24, 25, and you're thinking, I need I need somebody to trust, and it was hard. How long did this go on for? Uh, it went on for a couple of years, right, before we went to the court. And how did the press do another field day? A ah, field day every time, eh? Maybe me. Um, but that's the thing. Like, could they still print even though it was a, ca- a case going on? How does it uh, work in a civil well, case? And nah, they wouldn't the print, I don't think, much up until the case. But there would have been the odd few like, hanging there. Um, but when it's actual at court, like, I mean, they're in, it's in a paper every day. What's been said that day and all that, you know? Maybe scrutinise and, and they'll point it to where they want it to go. It's up to them. So see when you get called at court, is it like a courtroom? Oh, aye, it's like it's a proper court, aye. So, do you get called for a, do you need to give evidence again? Yeah, you need to give evidence. So, everybody that was involved, witnesses and things like that, we all got and stand. That's it. And you get questioned by her lawyer, my own lawyer and things like that. And do you need to go? Yeah, you need to go, aye. You've been summoned. And what happens if you don't go? I'm not sure. If it's a civil I case. Could, I couldn't Because it's not a court of law, is it? You no, can't, no, that's You can't go to the jail, that's a can good you? question, aye. I don't know. I'm not sure what would have happened there. Uh, I've not got a clue. Yeah, but you can't get the jail, can you? So, what is it? How does it, I genuinely don't I know. I genuinely it don't know either, even to this day, and I've been through it. You know, I Did you feel know. pressure to go? I there was loads of pressure on me, you know. Like I'm thinking, like, we're gonna go here, like we're gonna get the truth and that, just like Denise says, thinking that as well, you know. We're all up for it and it just went another way for me, you know. And what happened when you had to give evidence? Was it the same stuff you were saying the first time? Aye, same stuff, like what you've said to the police and things, you know. Nothing changes, it's just the same thing. The was, same the coppers story there? Over. was the coppers there getting evidence as well? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Doctors. Maybe one co- like policewoman or something like that, or a policeman was there, but no, nah, there wasn't a lot of police of that involved in it. What about background reports for yourself, the girl, Robertson, there's any stuff? Uh, How does it... I feel like maybe they they asked for background checks on us and things like that. We asked for background checks on, on Denise as well, I. And how long did it last when you were in court? Uh, I think it was for about a couple of weeks. Aye. It was a long, long couple of weeks. And who, who makes the verdict? Is it judges? Is it it's a, juries? It's one judge. One one judge has got that in his hands, you know. Like he's, he gets to, he listens to everyone, reads over it, and he comes to his decision. It, he gives his opinion on it. So his opinion was that she was probably too drunk. That was his opinion. So it's a court of opinions? It was, it's, I don't I don't really know but that's the thing so my solicitor was saying that's just the judge's opinion you know like and I think we appeal it and then there's like three other civil judges that say no we'll stand by like what Lord Armstrong said but this was the first of its kind or the second time I think it was the second time it had ever been done aye and how's it not done all the time 
I don't know. I don't know. Like that's what I'm saying. So I don't want to use football as an excuse, but I think if we were Bob the Builder, it, they wouldn't have entertained it. They wouldn't have. Like they're making an an example of us, and rightly so, because sometimes footballers do act out. We do do some stupid things, you know. But we're only human. Eh? We all make mistakes. It's just that when we make we make mistakes, it's well highlighted. The stories that I've heard with some football players is unbelievable. The stuff that's been covered up for years. Oh, that's it, man. The, 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 what I'm involved in, you know, this is probably even the worst, you know, like things that, that that are out there, like the stories that people can tell you. So what happens then? We in court and you get the verdict. Do you say you are still playing with Plymouth? How do, when do you find out? Yeah. You don't even get the verdict that day? No, you, don't, you need to go away and then that's it. Like you're sitting on that. You're sitting there thinking, my life's either going to be over or it's going to be starting again, you know. So that went on for about two months. And what happens when you get is that a guilty verdict? It is I. So you, your lawyer phones and he says, "I he's, he's went against us," you know. I always remember it in the morning. Burst out crying, obviously gutted, you know. Tell my wife, and then that's when I says, "Look, can I go to training today? We need to, we need to go and I'll go and speak to the manager and see what he says." And to be fair, Derek Adams like got on really well with him at the time, and he was saying, "You need to do what you need to do. You need to look after your family." And what happens then after that? We jump in the car, we go and get a bag, grab the dog, and we say, we'll, we'll just drive up north. And uh, we wanted to be with our families, but we thought the press and that will be at the door and things like that. Uh, so we went to Lake District and had a few days there and just kind of went walks in the woods and that, you know, and up the hills and try to clear the mind, try okay. to think straight. So what happens then? Was she compensation, 100 grand? Was it each or 100 grand between the two years? See, I think it was 100 grand between the two years, but... That's something I want to clear up as well, actually, because people think I went bankrupt, not to pay, like, so I didn't need to pay Denise. That, that's just a, a made up story, you know. And I think I've read it in the paper as well. That's fake, fake news. So I got told to sell my house by my lawyer. And when they, they sold my house, so I think it was like 170 grand I got out of my house. So 70 grand went to the lawyers, 100 grand went into the court. So the, the court seized the 100 grand if she won. So what I was led to believe is when she won, her lawyers need paid, like the role and things like that. That was, her, that was his name, I'm sure. And uh, so her lawyers will say, well, we'll take that for our legal aid. That pays a chunk of it. Go chase Dave. I never ever got a lawyer saying, oh, I want this, I want this X amount of that. So I went bankrupt because I got a letter through the door maybe about a month or two after it saying... I was due the tax man forty two grand, and I'd just been fighting. All my money has just went to this case. I never had forty two grand to pay the tax man, and it turns out I don't know. He's I phoned up the tax man. What's this about? And it was like an agent's fee or something years ago. I'm not even in the frame of mind to even fight that, you know. So ended up getting a court date to go to a wee court an hour or something uh, about this tax bill, and I says I've not got forty two grand to pay this, and the guy says we just need to make you go bankrupt. And that was in the paper as well. Like so they make up these stories that David and Robertson, David Goodbye went bankrupt, so didn't you pay Denise? That's false. Because like I say, to be naked nay charges were dropped and then got the civil case. Has there been any contact with that girl is how she's feeling, how she's dealt with because it must have been a lot for her to dealing with with the newspapers uh, and that night and and if it is true like you can only say it for your side but if everything is true imagine how her head yeah, is I do you know, know what I mean I, like, know. I don't know the girl and listen you've got to have every side and every angle covered and I'm more than happy to have her on yeah. if she ever wanted to say because it's not just all no, one side did you understand that but if there's ever any contact with her how she's dealing with how she's feeling or nah never any contact you know uh I would sit down and speak to her just like this if she wanted to speak though, you know, and, and speak about that night if she wanted to speak about that night. I don't think she ever will, you know. I think Denise has got her own issues and like like you say, like her background check and that we've seen it. We've seen how hard an upbringing she had, you know. And uh like I think it's probably a wee point where I want to get my point across. Like that morning when she's woken up on her own, you know, like she's got a brother and I think her brother must have made her feel terrified, you know. Like there's things that I know that I wouldn't even cross my mind even to say you know so I'm thinking there's a reason she said she can't remember and I don't think it's because it's us it's not because it is so after the civil case you get a guilty is every team then no touch after that that's it no so after I get a guilty in the civil case I've chucked it I'm I'm the one to play like, you know I, what age are you I'm probably about 27 27 I 
It would have been just uh, 27 because it would have just been maybe 26 actually. We just got married and that. Uh, I think I ruined my wife's wedding that time eh, with that as well. Nightmare. So the January comes in, chucked it, and I think it probably gets to about April. One of my mates just says to me, look, we've not got enough players for our team, a team called Doon Castle, you know. I wasn't playing, I wasn't keeping fit or not, nothing like that. Uh, probably just in a dark state of depression, sitting in a room with the curtains closed every day. Eh? And uh, I went, I'll play. I'll just play for a laugh, thinking nobody's going to find it. And then I was on the front page of the Sun for playing with this team. Shame football, rapist back in the game as usual. It's the same old headline, you know, I've read it that many times. I could tell you what they're going to say before it's even it. Uh, and then that's when, I don't know if you know, P Peter McDonald, Pizzo. Mm, don't know. He was a, he was a Clyde intern, like, at, like caretaker manager at the time. I think Clyde had just sat there manager. Or, it was Fergie, I think. He just left Ferguson. Uh, and he just said, look, he knew me. He knew me as a boy, known me for years. He says, do you want to come and see if you can get a game with us? And I says, I like, you know, uh, but I had to go and sit in front of a panel. So it was a panel of a, like a chairman, a director, uh, like somebody, the trust or something from Clyde. They asked me questions, asked me how I feel about it, you know. Uh, and they come to the decision that, aye, we'll give you a chance, you know. But people think I just walked back into football, you know. I never got any, I never got paid for that. You know, I played for free till the end of the season. I think there was like six or seven games left in the season. I just played for free to get a chance to get back in, you know. What about your misses and that when you're getting when you get guilty at the civil court for rape? What about your misses? Were there any chances of walking away or family members and friends turning their back? Or did everybody I, other people just on cross my yeah. mind, you know, like I, I used to say to my wife all the time, you're no you're no stuck here, you can you can leave any any time, you know. And but she's always she's a strong woman, she stayed with me, you know. What about kids? I've got my kids as well. I've got my daughter at four, my son at eight weeks. Uh so I don't think they know too much about it, but this is why I'm speaking today as well, you know, because they, they're they going to grow up, they're going to hear it, they're going to, people are going to talk to them about it, and uh, like, I'll speak to them about it, you know, that's it. Because you're about to tell your side of the uh, story, and rightly so, this is an Anything Goes podcast, uh, I will shy away from the interview, and listen, I'll get backlash for this, and that's yeah. alright, because I'm used to it, but I feel as everybody deserves a fair chance to tell their side, you've got a daughter now as well. Yeah. A lot of people you're trying to make people see that you're a good guy and maybe there's question marks to be raised but if your daughter came in and says that to you daddy i've been with two men they've raped us yeah. what's your first instincts that's a, I've, I've had this conversation with quite a lot of people i'd be the exact same I'd, i would i'd hit the roof you know i'd say where are they well, let's, let's get this sorted you know you've got to believe that you know you've got to but in the case that i'm in i know what happened you know and Denise has never said she's been raped, you know. Denise has always said that she just can't remember. She just wants to know what's happened. We told told her what had happened, but that that's that that means it's rape, you know. So after all that, because this is why you're here as well. You've been in the papers the last few weeks. You've been signing for teams. Yeah. Contracts getting ripped up the next day. Who did you sign for first? Was it Rafe Rovers? I so I was at Clyde and Rafe Rovers bought me from Clyde and then that's when it all kind of kicked off. Uh, I think there was a main sponsor there, Val McDermott. I mean, she just kind of ripped me apart, you know. I became, uh, but when I went to Rafe Rovers, I was told that you'll be fine and things like that. There's people that didn't ag agree with it, but they'll, they'll come round and things like that. So where I was at Clyde, I was happy there. I, I was captain. I helped with the disability classes and things like that. Uh, and I was enjoying it. I was working as well. Had a job, and uh, what were you doing? I, I was a electric electrician's mate, you know, and 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 that's what I'm doing to this day. I still I went back to my job, you know. People will think that oh, I'll go and get a normal job. I've got a, I've got a job, you know. But like the cost of living, you know, you wanted you want more for your your family, your your wife, your kids. So I, I want another job, you know. What's wrong with that? If I can use football to do that, then great. So. Or it, so Rafe Rovers you signed for him how long did it take for your contract to get ripped I think I signed on the Monday night uh, they had a game on a Tuesday night against Queen of the South and I went in and uh, there was no talk of being sat then I got treatment because I had a, a hamstring problem and the uh, physio just said to me look we're going to leave it to the weekend so you're 100% said, that's fine you're the physio I'll take your word uh, we were off the Wednesday and there must have been a lot of chat on the Wednesday because I went in on the Thursday uh, and the manager pulls me in and he just says, look, you're not going to be able to play here. And this, this is Monday, I signed Monday night within, like, there must have been about 30 minutes left in the window, you know. 
and I had concerns. I didn't. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go there, you know. But I was reassured. Did you have other teams to go to? Uh, I don't want any name teams, you know. I don't want to like. Get, did you have other teams? I did have other teams. I had a couple of things. Uh, I probably had a different option, you know, that I wanted to go, and Clyde stood in the way. Yet, you know, they didn't want me to go there. So where did you go after contract was dropped? Back to Clyde. Uh, aye, so Rafe, they turn around and says, we'll loan you back to Clyde. <laughs> it was like, I just felt like something that maybe they wanted, like just get out the door, you know, so I was like, right, okay, at least I've been there for years. Um, like the, I know the manager, he's like, he's Danny Lennon, he was like, a father figured me, we got on really well, spoke about everything, even about this, you know, he helped, he's a religious man and he used to speak to me about it all the time, how to be positive and use use it, this negative as a positive and be better in life and all that. So I, I took all that on. Danny took me back in, open my arms. Uh, and then I think it was, we had a game that night and it was like a some cup or a friendly or something against the, like the Rangers B team or something. So after the game, I got showered and that. And then the gaffer was like, oh, Danny Lennon was like, I'll phone you in the morning. I went, okay. So the morning comes in and the chairman phones me for Clyde and he says, "Look, you you can't you can't be here either." And I'm thinking, "What what's going on here? I've I've been here for like five years. Like, how can I not be here?" Uh, North North Lanarkshire Council they're getting involved now, and I was thinking, "Oh no!" It turns out North Lanarkshire Council is run by SNP, which is not help me because Nicola Sturgeon's already been on the news slaughtering me, you know, like jumping on it. And she uh, soon. She was saying that I've showed no remorse, I've no had to do rehabilitation, you know, like things like things that I'm never even going to get the opportunity to do or even anyway. And anyway, I'm an innocent man. I, I, I still say it to this day, I'm walking about free. Like, I, I'm not on a sex offender register, I'm not got any charges for this, you know. I don't even have a criminal record anymore. All the assault charges I've had, they're all gone, you know. So I've cleaned up my act, you know, like, and I've, I've tried to be a better person. But the head of North Lanarkshire Council came down hard on Clyde and says, if he comes to training on Thursday night, your your contract of our lease agreement will be torn up. And it was a man called Jordan Linden. I don't know if you've read about him in the news. Like, he's just a hypocrite, you know. He's got like five sexual assault charges or, so, or allegations on his name, sending pictures to 14-year-old boys. Like, this is a guy that's in charge of North Lanarkshire Council telling me I'm no fit to go to work where I'd been working for five years and I would love to know if the press went and spoke to people at the club and says well what was he like it, like because they would have they would have went and tried to get some dirt and I bet you everybody says that he was well mannered he spoke he spoke to everybody and like, I used to sit with a tea lady before games and chat away to her and ask how she was she's an old lady you know like I, I used to go out my way to be nicer than the rest of the boys because I knew what I was carrying was like obviously a bit more pressure you know I had to be nice and had to like go out my way to help because I knew that this rape thing people are going to be scared of me or skeptical and thinking oh I'm not sure about him so I used to make sure they felt comfortable in my presence. What about if you were in football and say girls after the game wanted a photo and that how do you react and I'm, I'm, without things I, getting took out of context? Like I used to get pictures I'm sure there was pictures of me somewhere with even the Clyde women team you know like like when I'm sure when they won games and all that, like we would be like, so like we used to go and train and after them they'd get the pitch before us, like uh, and we would all go and but we never we never interacted, we never like spoke or anything like that, you know. They were kind of like a separate entity. They were doing their thing and we were doing our thing. Like but everyone was always like, like amicable, like, well mannered, like right, oh, like we're on now. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was a big involvement with the women's team or anything. Like that. But did you feel uncomfortable around other women, especially with the, Aye, I the did, shit hanging I did on actually, your head? So you know, like, see if there was like women's teams or that there, like I would feel uncomfortable because I would be I would be kinda like feeling something inside that like it, it, thinking, are they scared of me? You know, like but I'd always try and be well mannered so they felt comfortable around me, you know, like and it's nuts to think that. Absolute nuts because you're like I'm not even like like this is like I'm thinking they might think I'm aggressive, and I'm not like even the case that we were involved in with the civil case, there was no aggression, there was no violence or like forcement, you know. And you're sitting there thinking, I even date to this day, I'm going to walk with a dog and that, and I meet like a lady or something or a, a an older lady, and I'm thinking, has she read about me in the news or is she is she like is she scared of me? You know, like, that goes through me. I got what came and I said to my wife and that you need to stop thinking like that. So 
again over the last few weeks you've made headlines again you signed uh, for a team in Australia it's come back in the surface even the Daily Record articles rapist blah 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 so this is case basically why you're here I'd, yeah inbox was flooded and I thought yeah. you know what I'll give the guy a chance to say things from your side uh, like I say if it was a court of law but a different ball yeah, game civil so court you've appealed you've always kind of fought your corner yeah. well you've not really fought your corner you've kind of stood in the background yeah. you've kind of been tarnished with it. and listen uh, you've been charged in a civil court, court so it is it is, like I say, it's a fucking dodgy one, but what happens then with the Australian, signing with the Australian team and then cro same thing again, contract gets ripped up after a day. What was the, what was the kind of steps going through there again? Just repeating itself? Oh, it's just the same. I'm sure the excuse I got from the Australian team was like um, the Women's World Cup was coming up or something in Australia and I think their training ground was getting rented, like rented by... Haiti women's team or something and I think they got wind they were going to sign me and all that and like oh that's just a big F you to women's football or women in general you know and I, I've not got anything against women you know like I'd love my daughter to grow up and play football one day because I'd be there supporting her you need to hold me back you know so how is it then try to you'll never move on the bottom line is no matter what you see when you say the day you're still going to get the same backlash with any team you sign and how do you try and get on Fate then I, I don't think we'll ever get over this like unless we go to criminal court and a lot of people will think that oh you will shy away from that wouldn't you I'd take it I, if we could go to criminal court tomorrow I would go and can I, you do that I, 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 it's not up to me it's up to the crown but like I would go tomorrow to clear my name and how does that overturn the civil one because the criminal court's bigger than the civil court well the criminal court is like the threshold the evidence has to be more concrete you know so it's just a, it's a more serious thing isn't it you can get jail time there and you'd be happy to go to the criminal court Aye. with all the evidence there? 100%. So what happens then? With, you've, what's happened with football now? Well, right now, I've not really got a team, you know, and uh, I've had loads of phone calls with loads of managers and loads of people. They're asking me if I would come, and I'm just like, uh, no. Like, there's, there's no point even doing this dance because it happens all the time, you know. All right, okay, I'll go and speak to the board and all that. And then I get the same old story, you know, there'll be someone there that's doesn't quite agree with it, you know, like thinks, ah, but what will the papers say, you know, because at the end of the day, like social media, papers, they run the world, don't they? They do. They they, they guide what people's minds think. Mm -hmm. But for podcasts, it's kind of changing the game as well. Uh, it's that, giving people a it. voice, a fair voice. We're not, mm -hmm. like I say, I'm not, here, I'm not a judge or a jury. I'm not here to press. Mm -hmm. I'm only here for you to tell things from your side. Happy to have the girl Denise on to tell yeah. things from her side. Happy to have the two of you sitting across from each other. Yeah. If that can ever happen to talk it out, I don't, I genuinely don't know. Like I say, I will get backlash for this because you have been charged in a yeah. civil court. For me, you've not been charged in a court of law, which kind of. Well, you don't get charged in a civil court. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You, were, you were, how do you, what, so what is it then? You've, you've been sued, you know, you have been almost been served, you know, like, uh, civil courts are normally for like business deals that go wrong, you know, and nine times out of 10, they all get settled and that, but I, like, it was all new to me. I was thinking, what is this? Like, I remember saying to the lawyer, so what happens now? Do I go to jail? And he's like, nah, like th th this isn't a jail thing. This is like, and I'm sure his words was like, this is this is just a money court, you know. Like you, you can't actually get jail time for this. I never knew that, you know. I'm going into this, my my head spiraling and thinking, like this could be it, you know. So you're married. You've got two kids. Your kids are four, and just one's a one's newborn. Eight weeks, eh? How do you worry about them when they go to school? And we know you you know how kids work. And everybody yeah, get yeah. internet. Is that a concern for it you? It's a concern for me, I you know, because like I don't want to think that about their dad either, you know, like just one night from hell you know like and it, it can it can just set up your whole life you know like, the way it's going to go uh but I, I hope i've got a good relationship i'm going to have a good relationship with my kids and i'll sit them down one day when they're old enough and it'll explain what happened and uh, and we'll just take it from there you know you have a suicide though oh all the time all the time i'll say that to my wife you know like like especially after the first minister gets involved you know you're thinking i'm one man and this is like an army against me. Like, I cannot fight this. Like, I've got nowhere to go. I'm sitting on the couch. My mum and dad come over and see me. And like, how are you feeling? I just burst into tears, you know. And my wife ends up quitting her job and everything. She doesn't even want to face it either. It's like, but we've still got bills to pay, yeah. We've still got to 
we've still got to live, we've still got to provide for two kids. But I suicide thoughts come in my head quite regularly, I But I do speak to uh, mental health people and things like that. Have you got a counsellor or anything? Or Not a counsellor, someone that I was, like, I don't know if she wants me to mention her. It's like, I, I kind of speak to the women from, uh, back, uh, is it back on side? Mm. Uh, Libby, she's been a lot of help, you know, she doesn't take sides, she's just there for people that need it. Aye. How are you feeling right now? Uh, positive, you know, like I'm thinking that this is a chance for me to say what I want to say and like I hope people can take for it and like for what happened to me, like I always think like like my son could be involved in something like this one day, you know, maybe have too much to drink, gets caught up in a bit of romance, you know, and it's like this romance goes wrong. And then before you know it, you're in court. How you, how's it took you so long to kind of come forward and tell your story? It's pro I've always wanted to speak, but I've always been told not to speak. So I don't know what's going to happen after this. I've always wanted to speak for years and years. I've been told by lawyers not to speak, you know. People are more clever than me. Like, but it's not helped me up until this point, has it? And then even when I was at Clyde playing, I thought, if I come out and speak now, like, you know, I've got a daughter now to, like, can I worry about, like, if I come out and speak now, well, is it going to ruin my, like, our wages, like, our, our, our way of paying for our bills at Clyde? So I've probably shied away thinking, I better know, I better know saying it in the new, or you end up, you've not got a wage coming in that month, you know? Why now? I don't have anything to lose, you know? Like, they've taken everything that I love, like, you know, like playing football. And and see, if I got a chance to play football for free, I'd, I'd still take it. Cause I just like playing the sport, eh? How much is it? Pff, listen, football's probably kind of it's probably damaged your life in a yeah. lot of ways with the lifestyle <laughs> that, that you yeah. led. But but again, it it's your mind. again, it's probably kept you sane. Aye, aye. When you've been going in, it's the only thing that's kept me probably alive. Like, that my family, obviously, my wife, my mum and dad, and all that, you know. Uh, but how is it with them seeing their boy tarnished with that? Oh, they're they're devastated. You know, my mum. My mum's angry, she's sad. My dad's an old school kind of guy, he doesn't say a lot of words, you know, but he, you know he feels it. He used to come with me every Saturday to Clyde. I think you're a lost man now on a Saturday, you know, because he's not got the football to go to. What about looking over your shoulders? Anybody ever try to attack you or just has everybody been all right? You get the odd people, you know, like they, they come out and it's not my younger kind of kid, but they're just looking for a reaction. I'm old enough now to realise what, what's happening. But in a younger age, I probably would have reacted differently, you know, but... Now I'm older, I, I, like, people are entitled to their opinions. I get that. What's the main things people you want people to take away from this interview? It could happen to anyone. See what what what's happened to us. It could happen to anyone. Like you know, you get drunk, you think everybody's in this, and then the next minute somebody's got amnesia or they've lost their memory. You know, like we we couldn't see that coming. And how do you move forward for the future if you can? I just try and be positive every day, you know, stay in this earth and put food on the table for my wee daughter, my, my son, my wife. So just, are you going to get back to football? Is that it kind of, you well, done with it? Is the same kind of routine, same kind of patterns? Because if you're planning to go to Australia, take your kids, kind of start a new life, and then the contract's ripped up straight away. I mean, listen, a lot of people say, well, he fucking deserves it. Aye. And we get that as well. Aye. We get, I get that. It. We get it. That's it. But I how do you, do you, do you get up in football? Do you, keep trying how do we do there i think see once you've been like a competitive player and like it's in you you know you can just never give up like i'll never give up i don't think you know until i'm 40 i'll be like right i'm done now you know until my legs give up that's when i give up you know but I, my wife tells me to give up every day like get over football do something different but i am doing something different that's like people need to know i am out there working you know but if i can get a chance to kick a ball about something that takes me away from What's happening in my life, you know, just for 90 minutes, like, it's worth it. Did many people turn their back? No, no, anyone close to me. Football players and stuff? Uh, nah, never. Like, even on a pitch against, like, kind of opposite players and that, they've never ever said anything wrong to me about it, you know. I think in football in general, well, it might look like we hate each other, but we've all got, like, respect for each other, you know. Everybody's been through something. If you could change anything, what would you change? <sighs> That night, I would, I would like, you know, Denise probably doesn't know this, but like, if we could go back in time and make it right, if I've, I've had a, a magic wand, we'd, we'd change it, we'd, we'd, we'd all, we'd all wouldn't want to be there, would we? How far do you think you would have went with your career if that night ever happened? 
ugh, it's hard to say, but I do think if I had a clear mind, I could have probably still been playing in the Premiership if I could if I had a clear mind. But it wasn't it be. So for anybody watching, what do you what would you like to say to them for the doubters and the people say you're guilty? What would you say to them? Put yourself in my shoes, you know. Try and put yourself in my position that night and think that you think this is like this is all right. That we're laughing, we're talking, and things like that. But then the next day, somebody says, "I don't remember doing that," and then you get branded with like an aggressive violence against women when it's not the case. Like put yourself in my shoes and think how it feels to go about for twelve years knowing what happened and feeling like you're innocent, but yet you're branded guilty. What about if Denise is watching? Like, I, I would just say to Denise, like, if she ever wanted to speak about it, you should just you should just speak to me, you know, like, and if you want to know, like, but I do think with Denise, like, I think she's got a lot of issues herself and I, I don't want to go into them too much, but, like, like, if she wants justice, like, I will say this one thing, if she does watch it, like, you got to have justice for everybody. You can't pick and choose who you, you have justice for. And she'll know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to say it on, on this podcast because it's, no it's not my place to say it. David, listen for coming on today and telling things for your side. Well done, but would you like to finish up on anything? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, so I'm happy you get me a chance to speak and hopefully people can take what they want for this. And like, so there's going to be negative, there might be some positive, you know, but like, I just want to go on with my life just like everyone else. And hopefully that there's a, something good at the end of this tunnel, you know what I mean? What do you think people's reaction will be when this goes out? Uh, like, I don't know, like, there might there'll be some people that like it, some people that don't, eh? It's it's one of them. You never really know till you do it. Like I say, mate, I'm not a judge or a jury. I can't eh, decide you're guilty or no. I'm not a, a, I'm just here to let people tell their story about for coming on today. Listen, I wish you all the best for the future. Hope everything works out. Hopefully you can settle things in the future, but all you can do is just keep trying, bro. That's it. Thanks, James. Care, Cheers, Cheers, man. Cheers.